be, but I have decided that I need four cameras. I need this thing, or the equivalent. I need a GoPro, of course. Um, I need a um, SLR, I mean a decent still camera, and I need a new iPhone. <laughs> that'll, that'll about do it, or some iPhone equivalent. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with that tree, and then we're going to walk around to that tree there. So this one first, and then that one that's up in there second. So this is a planted tree, and this is the one I was telling you that uh, normally in the wild these things have uh, thorns, and, and this is a thornless variety. In fact, they not only have thorns, but they have unbelievably awesome red thorns that, that, that uh, branch. So you'll get these big, long, six inch or more thorns that, that have all sorts of thorns coming off of them, and then thorns, it's just absolutely amazing. But this is a honey locust. And this is a legume. They, they produce beans in pods. And they actually tend to have fairly sparse vegetation, so you often can ha have this on a, uh, in your lawn and uh, still have nice healthy lawn underneath it. Whereas there are other times, types of trees that uh, if they're growing there, nothing grows underneath. An example would be the uh, American beech. Uh, which tends to have uh, really thick foliage. This thing behind me um, is a red oak. It's that, well, it's not that big a tree, but it's, it's the, the big tree back there, or northern red oak, if you like. And we've got quite a number of red oaks on this campus. I mean, it's pretty amazing how many red oaks there are. And there's another red oak this way, which we can get closer to without having to go through the poison ivy. So this thing here is a pretty impressive tree. It's tough to see the leaves. Uh, we'll see some red oaks where it's easier to see the leaves. You might see some on the ground. In fact, I can see some on the ground right there, all over the place. Heck, this is nothing but red oak leaves right here. Uh, but they've got this distinctive, very thick bark to them. Uh, and they're, they're tall, long-lived uh, long trees. They're pretty awesome. Actually, there's some leaves right there, some branches that are coming out. So that's a, a red oak. We've also got um, white oaks. Uh, if you look at the leaves, so that would be a leaf of that tree up there, presumably. You can see how it, they're, they're kind of sharp in their edges. And so um, the, the red oaks um, have leaves that, that are sharp like this. The white oaks have leaves that are much more rounded. I like to say that the red oaks have ridges and the white oaks have whirls. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I try to keep them uh, uh, distinct in my mind. But anyway, that, that's a red oak. And so the next thing we'll go to is over here. So most of the trees that uh, we'll look at um, have alternating branches. Um, the exceptions to this are the maples and the ashes and the dogwoods uh, and the buckeyes. And uh, this is an example of a dogwood. So this is a flowering dogwood right here. It's past flower. These things flower uh, in the early, early springtime. Uh, but you can see their fruits on them, these red fruits. And if you look at a branch like this one here, well, actually, that's not a good example. It's, well, actually, it is a good example. Here, we'll, we'll look at, can you see that right there, how they kind of split off from one another? 
that's alternating and in fact you'll get another stem coming up from between those two points in fact you can see it right on the end there so you've got two branches that have come off there on either side and then right here we've got where the flower was a branch in between so basically the leaves and the branches are going to come off opposite each other sorry not I use the word alternating um, these are not alternating these are opposite so the branches are coming out immediately opposite each other and on other types of trees they come out alternating and we'll see if I can find another example this actually uh, is an ash so this is opposite as well um, if you look at that right there trying to actually here maybe right here so if we look at we have the branch the main stem the main trunk really going up in the middle there can you see that and then we've got two branches coming off from it so those are opposite and then up oh, there's another one so this thing if you look at this branch down there we've got the main stem right there and then we've got two branches coming off of that that's also opposite so this is a um, an example of a maple that's an example of an ash and I'm looking for something that here we go so I won't say what this is so we can look at a better specimen but but you can see here how the branches are coming off one side then the other then the other then the other that's alternating so the, the trees that most of the trees will have these alternating branches the exceptions will be the maples like that one there the ashes like that one there the dogwood like this one here and the uh, the buckeyes also known as the horse chestnuts okay so this is a, a flowering dogwood with the opposite branches and then we have another tree with opposite branches, but a really pathetic one, unfortunately. If you look up there, you can see we have the main stem, and then we've got branches coming out opposite each other. So that's what opposite means, and this is an example of an ash nearly as healthy as that small one that we just saw right up there. And we have a bunch more ashes that are down there. Lots of ashes on the campus. Do you know if it's white or green? I don't know. Okay, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Check. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. At this point, it's really tough to tell. <laughs> Although someone who's better at this than I am could probably tell from the uh, bark. But it's good enough good enough it's an ash we have lots of ashes around here the ashes unfortunately are being attacked by the emerald ash borer which is a kind of beetle uh, and they're being killed off I don't know if that one's being attacked I don't know if that's what its problem is but uh, but a lot of the ashes are being lost So this is just a, a big tree that came down just a couple of years ago. I'm not going to say what it is because, again, I want to point out a better specimen, ideally one that's actually standing. Uh, but we'll see a bunch of those. They're very common in these forests. In fact, they're a tree that likes um, well-drained but, uh, but high uh, soil that gets lots of moisture that also has, uh, that's well-fertilized. Um, and bottomlands apparently uh, fits the bill perfectly. Well-drained bottomlands, uh, which are also perfect for farming. And so the um, settlers uh, in this part of the country would look for places where this type of tree was growing uh, in order to choose, you know, where it would be best to put in their fields because that's an indication that you've got uh, soils that, that, that stay relatively moist but not too moist um, and that are well fertilized. But well, we'll get back to what those are in a bit. It's just a, a spectacular fall <laughs> when that thing came down. So 
So you can see all the maple leaves, but, but the maple leaves are all coming from this tree right there, not from this one. This one you have to go quite a bit higher up before you see its leaves. You can even see them at all around the maple leaves, but it's, it's definitely alive. Um, this is a uh, tupelo um, slash pepperidge, and there are, so far as I know, three of these at least um, on campus, this being one of them. And this thing is going to produce these dark um, colored berries and, and drop them like crazy uh, in just a, a couple of weeks now. We were out here uh, last week, and my daughter actually found some berries on the ground, but there aren't that many berries out yet. Um, but they should be out uh, in force um, fairly, fairly soon. And there's, actually, I think there's more of them than, than just the three I know of. I think there's some actually out this way as well, because I know that there are berries that drop that way as well. So if you live in the dorms or head out to the dorms there, and you see a big pile of these dark, dark berries on the uh, sidewalk. It's uh, probably coming from a tupelo. Apparently, tupelo wood, people use it to uh, carve um, duck decoys. For some reason, it's a good wood for that. Now, this next one I am going to go into the woods for because I have to trying to avoid stepping on all of these ash trees, which are just everywhere. Here's some poison ivy. I mean, if anybody else wants to join me, feel free. So this tree right here, you can see the gray bark fairly high up there. This tree is an American sycamore. And it's about a meter at its base or a couple of feet above its base. But the really big um, specimen trees of the American sycamore can actually have uh, uh, the width of their trunk being about four meters or in excess of 12 feet wide. So this is only about three feet wide. So we're talking about a trunk that's about um, four times the width of the trunk of that tree. So these grow also in uh, near rivers and, and moist areas, uh, but they can be absolutely spectacular trees. And there are a few spots that I've been to in Ohio that have lots of these. Also, it's a tree that, that, that uh, can be planted uh, in cities. Um, and especially in Europe, they've got a lot of sycamore type trees uh, growing um, in cities. Uh, that they often keep trimmed back, and it makes for these spectacular uh, boulevards. I'm going in this direction now. So this right here is the absolutely spectacular sugar maple. Uh, that I wanted to make sure that that was the example of a sugar maple I showed you. So there's lots and lots and lots of sugar maples on this campus. Uh, but this is the oldest one that I, I know of. I mean, it's, it's, it's all hollow and rotted and it's nearing the end of its life, but it's just a spectacular tree and still very much alive. You just keep looking up and up and up and up and up and up and you'll see this canopy um, that's all belongs to this tree, way, way, way up there. So the next tree is this one right here. Now this tree has very distinctive bark. It's very common around here, although as I said up there, it's not all that common on this campus. Uh, but this is a black cherry. Really nice wood. But its bark, when it gets older, takes on what was described to me as, as a, a cornflake kind of uh, shape. Uh, it was explained to me in the uh, last class that perhaps it's frosted flakes instead of uh, cornflakes. And then we decided that maybe it's Captain Crunch, but, but, but perhaps not. But anyway, that is a, a black cherry. 
The uh, cherries are eaten by birds and the birds poop out the seeds and they grow anywhere that birds like to perch, like along fence lines. So this is a tree with very distinctive bark. You can see these parallel lines. So as a tree grows, the, the bark has to split apart and, and spread, get bigger, um, because the tree becomes larger. Um, and, and so different trees react to that in different ways. And the way this uh, changes in the course of growing is you end up with these vertical splits. So this is called a hop hornbeam. Apparently, the word hornbeam, the horn part actually is like horn, as in uh, the horns that uh, animals can have on them. And the beam apparently means uh, wood, which kind of makes sense because we call beams in houses or barns um, that are made of wood beams, but, but apparently uh, the older meaning of that term is simply uh, wood or tree. Uh, and um, the horn beams have very hard wood. And so it's hard like a horn is hard, so they're called horn beams. I'm not sure why this is called a hop horn beam, but that's one of the names for, uh, for that tree. We now head that way towards Riedel Hall. And on the way we'll pass some uh, red oaks and also a white oak, but it won't be the white oak I want to really point out to you. Well. Whereas when you see a white oak, it's much more um, world, uh, softer curves. So if you look at these leaves here, it's much less sharp, the indentations, or the extentations. But we'll get to a much more spectacular uh, example of those guys. So this is another red oak. Lots and lots and lots of red oaks on campus. So this thing here is the Kentucky coffee tree. Actually, there's two of them. There's one right there as well. This one forms fruits. For some reason, that one doesn't. But these are these beans I was telling you about. They're very tough. They apparently don't like to rot. So they're there, presumably, so that some extinct animal can come along and eat the pods and, in the process, uh, not consume the beans and thereby spread the beans around. The beans may very well pass through them um, un undigested and come out the other end and then sprout. These are also the guys that have the bipinnate compound leaves. So that thing there, I'm holding it at its base, that is a leaf. That entire thing. When we lose this leaf in the course of the autumn, it's going to come off all the way down there, all the way at the bottom there. So this leaf, it goes up straight like this, and coming off of it are these stem-like things with leaflets on them. So it's, it's, um, it, it's a bipinnate compound leaf. The compound leaf means that you've got leaflets on it, um, pinnate means that uh, the leaflets come off of the, uh, the main stem type thing, um, essentially opposite each other. And then bipinnate means that rather than having leaflets come off, we actually have what are in a pinnate um, compound leaf um, actually would be the whole leaf. So it's, a, it's an unusual tree in terms of uh, the types of leaves that it has. And it's also unusual in terms of how it uh, propagates itself. Apparently it doesn't do a very good job of propagating itself anymore. We also have back here another planted tree. So these are all planted trees. So this right here is a river birch, I think. Look at the distinctive bark on it. So this is a, a planted tree. I think it's actually a little far north of uh, its normal range. Um, but it, it does fine growing here. Here, I'll take the camera and 
have it take a look at the bark. So it's got this papery bark. So again, as these trees grow, the bark has to change in some way. Um, as these trees grow, I mean, their, their bark has to expand to, to take, you know, to, to um, keep up with the growth of the uh, branches and the uh, trunk. And they do interesting things in the course of their expansion. So the next one is actually around this way. So this also is a planted tree. And this is called a sweet gum. And these have these interesting looking kind of sort of star-shaped leaves. I'm trying to isolate one here. There we go. So that's a sweet gum. And there's, there's actually another one right there. Now across the way, but don't cross because, or don't cross yet, because we don't want anybody dying, getting hit by a car. So this thing right here is a cottonwood. Look at the leaves. You can actually see the leaves on this one. Those are its leaves. So that's a, a, a poplar-like leaf. And if you look, avoiding the poison ivy, if you look right there, can you see those fruits with the bumps on them? Well, I'll zoom in on this thing. Maybe I'll see them in it. Um, that is uh, a yellow buckeye. And actually, if you just look just a couple of feet uh, to the left of it, you'll see another set of fruits that don't have bumps on it or on them. That is an Ohio buckeye. So you're used to thinking of buckeyes, no doubt, this being Ohio, as being these brown things that have the large spots on them. Well, that's the nut that's found inside of the fruits. These are actually the fruits. And so you have to get into the fruits. The um, uh, walnuts uh, grow the same way, uh, where a walnut is actually a nut. Um, that's found inside of a, a almost an apple-like fruit, although it, it doesn't have the texture or smell of an apple, but it, it's got the, the essence of an apple to it. The, uh, it, it, it feels like an apple when you hold it in your hand. Um, but, but those are um, the buckeyes. And then over this way, you can see the blade-shaped leaves right up there, and that is a, a black willow. And that's a tree that likes to live near water. And in fact, we do have water. So there's drainage down here. And so now we're actually going to cross again. Well, let's, let's try to do it on the uh, side, on the uh, crosswalk. I believe these are more honey locusts. So I'm not sure if these were planted. These around here are, are shrubs rather than trees. Um, and these, this is an example of a rhododendron. This will actually keep its leaves uh, through the winter. So it's a broadleaf plant that doesn't lose its leaves. Farther south, these will grow much taller than they do around here.
This right here is a hemlock, an eastern hemlock. And these are also very shade tolerant trees. And they get their start uh, underneath the canopy and grow slowly. And basically they wait for the other trees of the canopy to die around them. Uh, and then they, uh, they just keep growing up and, and, and uh, shade out everything underneath them. Uh, these can live 500 years and get to be huge trees. And their, their niche basically is to, is to grow up in the, uh, in the shade of other trees and wait for the other trees to die and then they just totally take over their, uh, their environment. Back here, yeah, you can barely see it, but there's a, a really interesting cherry. If you kind of look through here, you can see it. If we walk over there, we can see it as well. But before we move onward, I want to cross the street again. <laughs> and this is our ginkgo. You can actually see that some of the leaves are starting to turn yellow. They'll all turn yellow and they'll drop. If you look closely at the leaves, you can see that they are these parallel. Actually, let's... They kind of look like a bunch of pine needles that are all right next to each other, but then sprayed out like a fan. Can you see that? So this is actually a conifer. This is um, more closely related to a pine than it is to a maple or whatever. And they're from China. Uh, they're not native around here. This is a, a male version of them, so they don't fruit. The fruits create a mess, and people don't like to plant the fruits. But they like the trees because the trees are pollution tolerant, and so they make a nice city tree. And if you've ever heard of Ginkgo balboa, or however one pronounces that, um, this is the tree they come from, although it comes from the uh, female version, not the male version. These guys over here are also, I'm assuming, planted trees. There's actually a few of them right here. And this is a white pine. They have these long, soft needles, and they're everywhere around here. They're not the only kind of pine that people plant, but a lot of people plant white pines. They get pretty big. And somewhere back here, here's another red oak. And in fact, there's another red oak. Let's see if I can see it. I want to avoid stepping on poison ivy to go in there. Somewhere back there is a sassafras. Maybe that's it. Yeah, that's, that must be it right there. And there's another sassafras that I can take you to. And they have, apparently have very fragrant wood and bark and leaves and things like that. And we also have... A little pathway over here. So this is poison ivy for sure. <laughs> but the tree it's on is a, a shagbark hickory. And the shagbark hickories you can see how the bark is coming off right up there beneath that poison ivy. Or maybe right here. We'll be able to see bigger trees that have the bark coming off more. But when you see the trees that have that bark just peeling off vertically like that, that's a shag bark hickory. Unfortunately, you can't really see the uh, leaves. All the leaves that you can see off of here are poison ivy. Actually, there's some leaves right there. There's a low branch right there. And you see the, um, the pinnate 
compound leaves right there. That's the uh, leaf of the uh, of the shagbark hickory. And over here, we have a still alive, but just barely, elm. I assume this is an American elm. Elms have these interesting toothed leaves, so they're small tooths, teeth, um, but they have, they're a little bit asymmetric, so they've got one side that, that kind of lobes up higher than the other side. So that's an elm, but elms suffer from Dutch elm disease and our elms don't do well. The elm that I was telling you about in class is actually that stump right there. If you look way up there, you can see we also have these pinnate compound leaves, but they're much smaller leaves than in the uh, shagbark hickory. This we've kind of decided is a bitternut hickory. And this is the biggest one that, that I know about that's at least easy to get to. And this here is just another sugar maple. This has a fairly distinctive bark as well. As it gets older, the bark kind of becomes overlapping in these sort of vertical plates. And over here, in the infinite wisdom of whoever planted this tree, this is a buckeye, um, but it's not an Ohio buckeye. <laughs> It's a yellow buckeye. They just planted on the opposite side here an Ohio buckeye. It's just this little tiny thing. We'll pass by it. Uh, but this is, is, is an, a yellow buckeye. Here's another nice red oak. And yet another nice red oak. Here's another dying ash. Our ash around here are not long for this world. That's a gorgeous red oak right there. Congratulations, by the way. This is another shagbark hickory. In fact, back there is a shagbark hickory as well. You can see the bark shagging off of it. And this over here is one of the uh, pin oaks. The pin oaks uh, have this um, cone-shaped growth where the, the leaves on the branches at the bottom are spread out much wider than the ones that are farther up. This is a, uh, an oak, but it's a very fast-growing oak. This tree is probably as old as this building. I think this building went in about 40 years ago. So that's a, a pretty good size oak for being only about 40 years old. And there's another one. You can see it right over there on the other side. It's not that dead tree. It's probably an ash up there. In fact, if I look closely, I think I can see that the branches are opposite each other. So that's almost certainly an ash, that dead tree. But the one in the foreground next to the... Um, building is uh, another pin oak. Okay, this way. So this is a planted tree, but it's kind of cool. This is a magnolia. You can see their fruits. I think these are the, the flower buds for next year. But they will be, um, they flower um, in the springtime. My daughter likes to say that uh, she doesn't realize how many people actually have magnolias in their, in their front yard until spring comes along. And, and suddenly you have all of these trees that have these spectacular flowers on them. So this is, this is one of them, but it, it's not flowering right now. And over this way, right across, is an American beach, and it's so close up that it's the one I'll 
talk about. That tree we saw that had fallen across the uh, creek also was an American beech. And these are trees that, that tend to have these canopies that are so thick that the grass has trouble growing underneath them. You can see we're starting to lose our grass immediately around it. This is still a relatively young tree. But when it gets branches quite wide, especially when they're growing near each other, not a heck of a lot can grow underneath them. There's another one back there. Uh, they, they, they sprout up from um, roots, and so they can kind of take over areas uh, where um, one of the trees is the mother tree, and then there's a lot of essentially clones of itself uh, that are growing around it. And they make beech nuts, although I'm not seeing anything either on them or on the ground that's beech nut-like. This thing is the tree I saved to show you what the white oaks look like. So this thing is a white oak. You can see, if you recall, what the red oak bark looks like. It's got a different bark from what the red oak bark looks like. And if you, well, actually that branch right there, if you look at the leaves up there, you can see that the leaves, instead of being sharp in their large teeth, they're instead rounded. So the white oaks have whorls, and the, um, the red oaks um, are um, more ridge-like. In fact, here is a branch from that tree. So see the leaves? See how um, they're much more rounded than the leaves of the red oak are. And you can see, I'm assuming that's an acorn. Those are some strange looking... Ah, there we go. Here's some acorns. So... The acorns. So this guy will be dropping its acorns. We used to have right here a um, one of those sand volleyball courts, and um, the the acorns would drop into the sand, and then they would sprout right there. And you could pick them up and plant them. I think I've got a uh, a white oak growing in one of my fields that uh, was an uh, offspring of this guy or girl, or however you want to think of her. So back there is another American beach, and that's an American beach. In there you can see another American beech. I mean, there's nothing growing underneath that tree, or not much. Maybe some maples here and there. But if you've got some big American beeches on your land, uh, you're not going to have any lawn underneath them. Or not much lawn. There's another big American beech back there. They're the ones that are, have that gray bark to them. So here's two tupelos. There's one right there and one right there. And if you look back in there, it's all bent, but that's a, a sassafras as well. So the tupelos are the ones that produce the, the their pepperages also, the, is another name. They're the ones that produce the, uh, the berries that'll drop and make a mess. This is another magnolia. This is uh, a tree that actually was planted um, uh, as uh, part of the retirement uh, celebration for um, a chemistry professor who had worked here for about 25 years. 
She was uh, my mentor here when uh, I first got here. Someone by the name of Janet Torino. But she actually hasn't been here for about 10 years now. But anyway, so that's another magnolia. And then we'll just head this way. And in here, we have another shagbark hickory. So you can see the large leaves and if you can see through the poison ivy, you can see the, the shaggy bark on them. This, this tree right there. And then finally, as promised, <laughs> this pathetic little thing here is our Ohio Buckeye. It was planted either this year or it's probably planted this year. And that'll grow up, eh, not that big, because Ohio Buckeyes don't get very big. They like the uh, flowering dogwoods, or trees that uh, grow um, underneath other trees that tend to uh, leaf out and flower early on. Um, and as a consequence, they do a lot of their growing and, and photosynthesizing before the other le uh, uh, trees um, that are actually over the top of them. Um, leaf out and start shading these trees. So they, they're a fairly diminutive tree. Um, but, but nonetheless, they're, they're kind of cool in terms of what uh, fruits and, uh, and nuts they make. And that's it.